This expansion is going to dramatically shake up Path of Exile's metagame in a big way. Woo! Thirdly, we'll talk about our plans to make Path of Exile more challenging, restoring some Royale! of the adrenaline and terror that you may recall from the good old days of closed beta. Next up, we're going to talk about Path of Exile Royale, the 100 player <sighs> battle royale mode that we experimented with back in 2018. We'll be launching a restored and revamped version of Royale today, once our question and answer session with Ziggy D has concluded. And this event will run over the weekend. Today? Anyway, there's a lot to discuss, so let's get started with the trailer for Path of Exile's Hello? next expansion. No, it's not just me. Oh my god! They wait. Oh my god, finally! For one who may finally challenge them. Wealth and power will be yours. Oh my god, it's actually real! It's frozen work! Expedition. Alright, I've got a lot to tell you about. Let's start with the Expedition League itself. Long ago, Kalgurin explorers came to Rayclast well, in the hope of colonizing it. it. Rayclast did what it does best, and they never returned. His gems. Our goal here is that regardless of which build you're playing, there will be new gems that you can add to your character. What is the totem? Let's go through the 19 new skill and support Is gems. that melee totem? It's melee totem. The Earthbreaker support gem can be linked to any slam skill. Upon use, it summons an ancestor totem that uses that slam on your behalf. In this example, Told we've created you. a build that summons multiple ancestor totems that each wield tectonic slam. As you can see, this build covers a large area in fiery death while you get to stay out of harm's way. This is a powerful option for chieftains in particular due to the various totem I bonuses available it two days on their ago. ascendancy I, Do you remember? I Adept players will also be wondering if the Earthbreaker support allows you to create new slamming totems, Warties. and the answer is absolutely. Both of these skills, so okay. that the overall aggressive shield build is more powerful. Okay, good. That, that was needed. <laughs> the new Behead support gem can only support strike skills, and is basically Be like a mini headhunter. When what? a supported strike kills a rare enemy, you'll steal one of its modifiers. Obviously, this gem can't be as crazy as the full headhunter experience, so it comes with some restrictions. Stolen modifiers can persist for 20 seconds, and slaying another rare enemy will replace the modifier you have active. The Behead support gem also grants you more damage against enemies on low life. In conjunction with the Slayer's Bane of Legends Ascendancy passive, this bonus really embraces the execution theme of the Behead support. Lastly, you may notice that the Pathfinder isn't holding any weapons. This is because Explosive Concoction is the very first ranged skill that can and must be used unarmed. It's also the first skill that directly interacts with the benefits provided by your flasks. When you throw your explosive concoction onto a targeted area, it deals fire damage and uses available charges from your ruby, sapphire, and topaz flasks to grant bonuses based on what flask charges were used. The skill still works even if you don't have the appropriate flasks or charges yeah, to consume, that. but correctly managing your flask setup can greatly enhance the power of the skill. What we really love about this gem is that it brings to life the idea of throwing your flasks at enemies and having them explode. In conjunction with the flask-focused benefits provided by the Pathfinder's Ascendancy passive skills, we're really excited to see what new playstyles are enabled by this gem. The itemization choices to make in focusing more on damage modifiers rather than the typical focus of maximizing attack speed. Cool! Summon Reaper creates a single powerful minion that uses fast melee physical attacks which cause bleeding. While the Reaper is active, you can use the skill again to direct the Reaper to a specific location, dealing a powerful attack along its path. The Reaper wants to be your only minion. It reduces the life and damage of your other minions, and will consume them to heal itself and gain damage and speed buffs. When designing this new skill for the Necromancer, we wanted to explore the idea of having a single ultimate minion. It will mean that players who engage with the content will find a consistent difficulty level between League content and regular content. It's worth noting that the behavioral and balance changes to monsters will definitely affect their map versions. For quite some time, Path of Exile players and developers have been keen for a big rework to its flask system. In the end game, flasks grant really powerful buffs for a number of seconds after use, and these buffs allow the player to kill monsters quickly, filling the flasks up so they can be used as soon as they run out. 
With five such flasks equipped, the correct behavior was to spam the one to five keys repeatedly to keep all the flasks constantly up without any downsides. This flask piano playstyle was popular enough that players were improvising devices to hit a cast. <laughs> Unfortunately, this entire mechanism is currently bypassed by triggering skills as this skips their mana cost. This basically means that we can't design really powerful spells. In 315, triggering skills through support gems will require paying their mana cost. In <laughs> fact, sometimes it now costs more than casting the gem by hand. <laughs> Thankfully though, this isn't very hard with well-constructed characters. Certain support gems that were originally disabled from supporting triggered skills, like Arcane Surge, can now be used to support them. Builds that use triggered skills are some of the most interesting characters in Path of Exile, and they are often the best representation of the craziness that our character customization system allows. We're confident that they are just as powerful as before, but we now have more interesting design space to explore with future skills. I can't wait to see what you come up with here. So back in early 2018, there was a trend where every online game was releasing a Battle Royale mode and getting a lot good of good press in the process. We had a running joke in the office that our fast development speed meant that we could probably add a Battle Royale mode to Path of Exile in one day of development. As April Fool's Day approached, we tried to do exactly that. We pulled a few developers together and asked them to spend no more than one workday each on their contributions to this new mode. On April 1st, 2018, we launched Path of Exile Royale. I already knew about this. Goldram! Uh, yeah, buddy! <laughs> but the community did not forget. In fact, they've been quite keen to remember it constantly and to urge us to bring it back. But that wouldn't be easy, as to actually make it a decent experience would require a lot of custom balance, playtesting, and feature implementation work. A few months ago, we decided to do exactly that. Path of Exile Royale will return today. In fact, immediately after the QA section of this live stream, we're going to run it for the weekend as a test and then turn it on every weekend for a while, starting the week after Expedition's launch. We'll patch it between weekends with balanced tweaks, and if it's popular over the long term, new features. We have no idea what the long term viability of this game mode is going to be like, so we'll run it for this league and then assess where things stand. Our initial version of Royale from 2018 used Path of Exile's default passive skill tree, which didn't have interesting options for characters that rarely got to level 10. It also used all of our skill gems and unique items as is, where many of the interesting ones were way too high level for these super low level characters to ever find. We've made a completely new Royale specific passive skill tree that has everything you need to quickly adapt your character for high speed PvP combat. It features approximately 90 new custom notable passives, a special new left aligned window so you can stay aware of your surroundings while allocating skills, and you gain two passive skill points per level. You're also able to allocate passive skills from any of the tree starting locations, regardless of which character class you picked. Wow. 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 Honestly, I mean, there's some things I'm worried about, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty hyped. I'm pretty hyped. I, I mean, I think... Okay. Mo... I want to do a quick poll. I'm losing it. I don't even care if I die to somebody. I just can't see a green health bar right now. Oh my god. Oh, it's a blighter. Victorious. Oh my god, finally. Oh my god. Oh yes, there is prizes for winning. That's why I want to win. Oh my god, finally. That took way too many bugged attempts. We did it. I want to go pee. Yeah, the price levels up the more you win. I would have had six wins. I'm not up to that just yet. Yes, kill each other. No way. Well, he did what I wanted. Nah, I mean, I don't think Blight is the strongest. 
I think puncture is the strongest by a landslide. I've only found it once. Puncture is like, you can't lose with that. We did it. We did it. We did it. Snap that. What killed you? You died. Did you know? Got a quicksilver in the game when letting you use it? Oh, really? Why not? I killed him? Really? I did it! 